And we are live. How fun is that? Let's have a look. Is everyone here? I can see people trickling in. Hello. Um, let's see. I see Rebecca. I see Marianne. I see that Joanna is here. This is here. Janice from California, of course. Hi again. And Robert is here. Hello, hello. Brazil, Maria from Brazil. South Africa, Brenda, welcome. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, Catherine, Pam from Idaho. Oh, this is so great. Nobody from Europe. Come on, man. <laughs> What's happening? Okay, Scottish Highlands. John, hello. Christine, Donna, everyone trickling in. I love it. That's so good. So today we have um, an, uh, a Q&A webinar or an Ask Me Anything or whatever you want to call it with Andrea Joseph because, um, well, uh, this week has been quite exciting in the colored pencil course. And um, I have something in my view. Oh, can I click it away? Yes, I can. It's, it's gone now. Um, it was really a, a very exciting uh, week. I mean, we've been testing and trying and learning about uh, colored pencils so, so much. And I really hope that you like the format of seeing the, all the different artists in the same week showing their approaches. Um, and we'll have a lot more of that in the following weeks. And today we are talking to Andrea. So um, let's, let's bring her in. Uh, let's see if I can do this. I can do this. We have a split screen. Hello, Andrea. Welcome. Hi. Hi. So how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Bit jet lagged and tired but yeah, yeah you've good. been you've been busy tell me what, what kind of yeah. endeavors have you been into uh, lately well in the last six weeks I think I've been to Amsterdam to film the course maybe that was a bit longer and then I went to San Francisco yeah. and then I've just been to Morocco and my life isn't always that jet set and exciting <laughs> but this last few this last couple of months has been yeah very exciting I think once you start with with a bit of that it sort of one thing follows the other right I mm. mean that's that's mm. really what happened is isn't it that at SketchCon you actually got mm. that the the contact so you you went to San Francisco this year and yeah. then San Francisco might have been followed up with the Morocco thing. Is that, isn't that how it worked? Isn't it like a yeah. sort of snowball effect? With yeah, exactly. So it was after SketchCon, I went for the first time. I'd always wanted to go to San Francisco and I thought, well, as I'm in the area, <laughs> I didn't realize quite how big the area was because <laughs> in the UK, everything's, really quite close yeah and so but yeah I went to San Francisco for a couple of nights just to draw the houses because I love them and I just knew it wasn't enough time so I yeah I made some contacts and then when um the opportunity to uh submit uh proposals for some workshops came up I just thought I'm gonna try this I'm gonna do it and they got accepted, and then, yeah, That's and then fantastic. Moroccan trip came through that. So, yeah, I mean, it has, I hope it continues to snowball, because... Uh, fantastic, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been a great time. That's really great. I'm so happy for you that this is all mm -hmm. happening, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and how do you feel about... Um, the colored pencil course being live and people are actually doing homework and following our instructions there. Yeah, no, it's really amazing again. It reminds you, you know, of that, that first course, which I think is about five years ago. The first course that I did, which was yeah, the second true. semester. That was in seeing, yes. Yeah. yeah, and that kind of buzz of, of that. So, yeah, it's great to be a part of all that again. 
That's fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people in, in the course who are taking the course are all very happy that you're back again. <laughs> and uh, some of them are also obsessed about lettering because you also did the creative lettering course. You yeah. taught that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you are a big, big contributor to uh, our mm -hmm. sketchbook school community uh, inspiration. Definitely. Well, yeah, I'm... I'm extremely pleased about that it was a uh, that first course that I did was uh, I'd never done anything like it before and and I was right up to the moment we were filming and even when we were filming I'm like oh can I really do this and uh, remember, it's yeah. been an it's been an amazing amazing thing to be involved with and <laughs> you know I have made loads of friends through it as well yeah, I'm so yeah. glad. Oh, that's so great mm. to hear. Yeah. Well, and some mm. of the friends that you made are actually watching mm. right now. I know. So, <laughs> hello, everybody. And um, so I just want to say, if you're watching this, I'm really happy that you're here. Uh, we'll be uh, asking uh, Andrea some questions that have been posted in, in class. I have collected those. But if you have any additional questions, please post them here in the chat. I will uh, follow and check uh, what's in there and then I will feed those questions to Andrea and then see if she can answer them. So... <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, so um, well, let's, let's dive in um, with a very simple question that is maybe hard to answer. But um, <laughs> I mean, we are all colored pencil lovers here. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really want to know, and we have discussed this in class, but it's, it's good to just, um, uh, just uh, touch upon it again once more. Like, mm -hmm. Why do you like colored pencils so much? Oh, right. Um, I have used them right from the start, and I think I've used them in really different ways, actually. So... Um, in the beginning, I used them always as a kind of a finishing tool to my drawings. So I used to do like ballpoint pen drawings, that kind of thing. And so colour pencil always sort of brought all my drawings together. And I still kind of use them in that way. So, But now the tools, the other materials I use are quite different. So I use watercolour or gouache or paint and I still use the colour pencil to bring that the drawing together at the end and I think that's why I kind of really like them because I think the exciting bit about drawing is that you know that sort of when you come into the end of it and you get to put all the lovely little details in and so I I really like them kind of as that that finishing tool and they're the bit that they're the bit of the drawing that does all the the things that I like like all those lovely final details yeah and um but also saying that sorry I like no. them just to sketch as well yeah yeah just as a instead of graphite pencil I'll use color pencils always actually to sketch right right yeah and um mm -hmm. it's it's um, the way you work right now is so different from <laughs> um, from how you mm -hmm. used to work. And and Donna yeah. actually mentions that here in the in the comments. She says, "So um, your style um, has uh, seems looser now. So what what mm. changed?" Um, well, definitely going out and sketching and sketching on location was the biggest change. Um, everything I did prior to that was pretty much still life. And still life is a whole different, you know, ball game, really. You're, um, you can leave a still life set up for days or weeks and, you know, you have all this time to study it a lot a lot of time um and the biggest change for me then was uh getting involved with sketching groups and going outside uh to sketch where your time limits are so different and then all the other distractions 
I mean, you know, I could sit at, set up a, a still life uh, in the early days and leave it there for a week or so, and it would never be touched, you know, it would always be in the exact same place. So the biggest change in all that was uh, sketching outdoors and all the restrictions and distractions that comes with that. Right, right. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. Um, and there's actually a follow, sort of a follow-up question uh, there too uh, from uh, Cindy. She says, because you used to work with a uh, ballpoint pen a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she asks, would you do a ballpoint art class? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I could do it. it <laughs> I definitely could. Um, it, it feels very easy to me to draw in that way. Um, and I guess that's what's not as appealing about it is because yeah. I just love the new challenges. I just love learning something new. And that's why since I stopped really drawing in that way with ballpoint pens, I've gone through lots of different mediums, um, ink and watercolour, and, and I don't think I'm, you know, um, anywhere near getting, near knowing how to use these things yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've yeah. so, so, so much more to learn. Yeah. Um, um, and, and that, I love that. I yeah. really, really love that. Yeah, but, yeah. And... And I think um, because it's, um, uh, uh, sorry, I really can't find my words, because it's something <laughs> that you did, well, a long time ago, I think you could say, at least yeah. like uh, yeah. a few years ago, it yeah. might be, it, it would feel like teaching something old. Well, there's yeah. other stuff that excites you now so much more, but Cindy just to make you happy, we do have a class <laughs> where Andrea actually does teach quite some ballpoint art and that's in the course <laughs> Seeing, so check it out on sketchbookschool.com mm -hmm. and you can learn that whole ballpoint um, uh, technique from, uh, from Andrea herself, so not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, and that's actually, I also... Um, I wanted to ask something ballpoint related because I was wondering if I look at through your art and I, I mean we've I've seen your sketchbooks and I, I follow you on Instagram everything is color 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 and it's like wild mm. and loose <laughs> and fun but would mm. you ever do something in just black or just blue like you used to and i don't mean ballpoint mm. but just you know mm. mute uh, not muted color but maybe one color or or black or something uh yeah definitely i i loved really really loved monochrome um drawings i i love them i love them still to look at them you know and I, I did that for quite a while, I think, after maybe the ballpoint pen and, and learning to, starting to learn to use ink and, um, you know, getting into more like fine liners and things like that. So a lot of that work was uh, monochrome. And yeah, I love it. I, like, I love to see that work. I, um, and yeah, it's not something I'm against. It's just I also love color now. Just and, obsessed with uh, color. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's good. and it might just be a phase, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it might just be a phase, but yeah, I just love color at the moment. Yeah, I think I think that's that's just how it goes in yeah. in art. You know, you move from one one phase to another, and that's fantastic. Well, I I that's what keeps me interested. Actually, yeah. I I you know that's what really keeps me wanting to get out there and draw more and more and more is that there's just so much to learn and so much so many challenges and and yeah I wouldn't really want to stay still I've, it's just you know I would find that quite frustrating yeah. and I think actually a lot of what I do now is a bit of a reaction to spending five years just 
do, studying still life, just learning to draw with the ballpoints or, sure, you know. Yeah. I, I loved that time. I'm really pleased that I did that because I taught myself to draw, I think, in those years. But mm -hmm. now I just want to try everything. <laughs> Yeah, good. I love the enthusiasm and the and the mm. curiosity. I think you need to mm. always be curious. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so let's have a look at the questions from class. Um, if I can actually pull them up. Uh, let's see. So and, uh, yeah, Nadia asks something about lettering, and um, she mm -hmm. says, "Do you use color pencils in your lettering?" Yeah. So you know exactly what i did with pens and um i do with color pencils exactly the same so if i'm drawing in the street and you know see some um you know if there's lettering that's part of the scene i'm drawing it's exactly the same processes actually and i use an awful lot of the the things that i did in the lettering course you know they are things that i just you know, still part of my work and I use them exactly the same way, mm -hmm. um, exactly the same thing with colour pencil. And I've got a little, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, this is very recent, it's a uh, drawing from Morocco. Oh. And, uh, I mean, yes. I can I can post that somewhere, but it was of um, like wow. a fish, fish stand. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a bit of lettering on that and it's just exactly the same as I would use pens. Love it. So that's watercolor mm -hmm. and uh, colored pencils. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. So uh, let's see what else do we have. Sorry, I'm switching from screen to screen. It's a bit annoying. I'm, uh, <laughs> um, so Ilse is asking, can you give some more demos of layering and building with watercolor pencil only? Well, Ilse, we will be doing that later in the course. So you just need to hold on to your horses for a little bit. Um, yeah, but she uh, she's really excited about that. Um, also, she, she also asks if you combine watercolor pencils with watercolor. And yeah. we will see more about that in the course as well, but yeah. maybe you can talk a little bit about it, or maybe you have, I mean, you you just showed um, a drawing with yeah. uh, colored pencils and watercolor. Um, mm -hmm. So you combine, you mix everything, right? Yeah, at the moment, that, that that's exactly my favorite um, tools, is watercolor or gouache. I don't think, it, to me, it doesn't make much difference. I like both. Um, watercolor and color pencil on top and that's pretty much what I'm doing at the moment is is mainly especially with sketching and sketching outdoors it's all that kind of work um, and yeah some recent pictures and they're all you know using that the seals on um, Pier 39 oh man so, I love that <laughs> so um, I put down the watercolor um just to mark out where where you know things are and then on top i go in with um the watercolor pencils to bring to put like all details oh, and all the you know bring the drawer into life i think so yeah another one of the fish stand <laughs> but nice. um so that's exactly how i work at the moment it's all I put my watercolor down and then work on top of that with with watercolor pencil um, with pen with color pencils. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes watercolor, sometimes not. A and big uh, mixture. Yes, yeah. Um, just whatever you grab, probably yeah. <laughs> kind of wh yeah. whatever is at hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the the drawings you just showed, also it occurred to me they are. Pretty much a limited palette. I mean, is yeah. that is was that just the colors around you, but or or is that like your favorite colors or colors you pick that you see? How how do you decide? Um, it's so yeah. I think I always use a limited palette. 
Um, but how I get to that palette is by um, looking at the colours that are around me. So, for example, you know, with the fish, the fish stand, what I loved about these, this this image was that the, all the fish were all these kind of blues and greys and oranges and 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 the, then the fish stand was blues. So I kind of looking out for these colour themes. So, you know, when I sit down, you know, that's what I'm taking in is the, you know, the colours. And then I kind of break that down to two colours, possibly three, but I'll try and keep it at two main colours. And that's sort of the theme of the, the drawing. And, and, you know, I do add details in, you know, other colours and things, but mainly what I like to do is to choose, you know, two starting, as a starting point, two colours and then work with those. Uh, and it, you know, it's not a rule that I just keep to those, but, you know, I can introduce others. Usually I wouldn't introduce others with the watercolour. I'd introduce others with colour pencil. So the details and things like that, I would bring in um, maybe with some different colours. But it's always a starting point for me, which would be a couple of colours. And why is it? I mean, in the result, I can see that it brings a lot of unity and sort of colour yeah. harmony. Or do you have yeah. another reason for it to make it easier to yourself or...? I don't think there is. I mean, it makes it easier from a painting point of view. So from a practical point of view, right. it makes it easier. But um, I don't think so. I think it's that unity thing that you, you said. So here, this is, I, is a purple and a green is the starting yeah. point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the greens change and, you know, then there's some more bluey greens and some more kind of yellowy greens but that is um the, you know that really is a two color i think it's purple and a green and and it is about the unity i think and the harmony of the drawing right mm -hmm. right excellent um <laughs> there's a question from someone who hasn't posted their names and <laughs> maybe this is related he or she asked why is drawing slash painting so hard <laughs> <laughs> do you have an answer <laughs> um i don't know if i have an answer to no, that <laughs> no it's it's a little bit mean to ask you this question but i think okay i i can i i will answer the question um it gets a little less hard every time that you make a painting or a drawing mm. So mm. why is it so hard? It feels hard in the beginning and it feels mm. hard if you don't have a lot of practice. But by practicing mm. a lot, it will get easier and you will find new challenges that in the beginning you mm. will be like, oh man, this is so hard. But mm. it's not only hard, it's also really a lot of fun and it's discovering mm. a lot mm. and um, experimenting and playing. So I really hope that you don't only feel that it's hard, but that you also feel the fun of it. So that that's yeah. my my two cents to try in, in you know <laughs> in trying to answer that that big question. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of enjoy that when I start with a new tool, and it is hard. Watercolors were really, really, really hard when I first started using them, and I. I got some gouache for Christmas last year and I still, still find them really, really frustrating. I can't, I, don't, I never quite get the results I want from them. But, you know, I really love that, that space, that, you know, period <laughs> in the process where you're trying to work things out. And I just find that quite exciting um, and that might be easy for me to say because, you know, I've been drawing for a while and, you know, it's, it's 
probably easier than starting out but it is all about practice I mean you taught it yourself it. so I think yeah. um, it's it's not it's fair to for you to to say that <laughs> I mean, you, you have taught yourself to draw so yeah so um, uh, I'm just going to switch gears a little bit uh, Corinne has asked this question in class and I can see that uh, Christina is also asking it here in the comments um, and I'll pull it up here Christina is asking how much sketch gear do you take with you when you are when you go on location and how many pencils and other art supplies do you bring and Corinne has a, the same question she says um, do you have a minimal take along uh, colored pencil sketch kit what do you include so the answer is always too much <laughs> I always always take too much and I'm so jealous of those people who have these tiny little kits and I really want to be those people, you know, but <laughs> um, I probably take too many. I will take, I will take only one set of paints, um, but when it comes to the colour pencils, I have got quite a lot of, you know, I have to take this box of tiny little pencils because they've got all my favourite colours in. And I think you probably will see them in class. Um, and then I have a pencil case full of them. Because, you know, you'll always, um, you'll always want the ones you leave at home. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I take too many. I mean, when I do go out and I've just got a couple of things in my bag, a couple of pencils or a couple of pens, you know, I still make a drawing. I'll still always make a drawing. But, um, yeah, I think I probably take too many. And I'm still looking for the solution of the tiny art kit. <laughs> right. I get, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you haven't found it yet. <laughs> no, and I think it's it's actually the same with, uh, as it is with your... Um, interest in making art it changes all the time so uh, once yeah. you think this is the perfect you know <laughs> yeah, pencil yeah, yeah, case yeah. or the perfect yeah. sketch kit you add something new and then you're like oh how am i even you know okay we we'll need to just start from scratch uh, scratch again yeah yeah so um do you have do you happen to have a sketch kit with you here near you right now or not um not so much case, i have uh, actually I have got that little box so this is just a little box of this is one of the things I take with me so it's just this little tiny box and it has um, yeah small you can see that all the tiny little pencils they're mm -hmm. all wow really I mean there are some tiny pencils um, and these are the ones that the colors, so skin tones, I usually, especially for my portrait drawing, I've got loads of skin tones. Um, but these are the ones, the colors I really love. Look at that one. <laughs> um, and I use them a lot. And then, uh, so they get smaller and smaller. And um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really annoying. Yeah, because <laughs> but, it's a, but I still do it. Yeah, is so it, that's one of the things I take. Isn't it hard to hold them if they are so small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know there's a tool, you know, one of those yeah, extender things, yeah. which I keep meaning to buy but haven't quite got round to yet. Right, so right. I take that might be helpful. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's scroll because there are some questions posted and I don't want to miss any here. Um, a sketch gear. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Um, Francine is asking, uh, do your drawings talk to you as you work and then make adjustments uh, as, as if you were holding a conversation on site or do you get better results planning it out first and working, it, uh, working on it later in the studio? Uh, no, I think it's exactly as you said, uh, um, the first part of that question. I think definitely they um, talk to me and uh, I'm, I always think, I, I'm, 
I'm listening to the drawing. The best results I get, I think, is when I listen to what the drawing needs. And I don't know if that's a good explanation. I sort of know what I mean. But I'm always, whilst I'm drawing, I'm always listening to what the drawing is telling me. Yeah. So I guess it is like this conversation, um, what it needs next. And, you know, I think that's when I get the best results, when I really kind of listen to the the drawing yeah I don't know if that makes sense but I, it, it totally makes sense to me I think okay. it's just really um, following your intuition and I think <laughs> um, uh, colors uh, adding colors or choosing certain colors like you you know like we talked about just now uh, choosing yeah. your colored pencil because or, or your your colored uh, color palette because some of the colors really stand out to you that's yeah. what's listening to the subject is and then once you yeah. start your drawing then you just listen what's what you know what it needs maybe you have chosen blue and brown but it needs a little bit of red it just yeah it's just a feeling that i think you also sort of um develop a little bit more to to recognize the more drawings you make so yeah and I think that's also really important is that, you know, the listening to, you know, your tastes and your styles and things too, because I think, you know, with something say like that, like this one, or even, you know, this one, what the colors that they were the colors that stood out to me in that scene, Yeah. but the colors that could stand out to you could be very diff could be different ones exactly and that's if you listen to that kind of thing that's how you build up um your own style and you know mm. uh, be because we all have different tastes and different style and i think that you know the more you try and listen to that and the things that are talking to you then that's how you will build up a, a style of your own right so. right yeah I uh, I totally agree. Yeah, um, and in addition to uh, to that question, um, so if you um, uh, combine watercolor and colored pencils, mm -hmm. uh, do you uh, apply the pencil over the watercolor on site, or do you that do you do that back home? Do you ever work on a drawing when you are back home after you went on location? Um, I can, I do now and again, especially if, you know, something like, which is, would be typical here in the UK, you get rained off, you know, um, it starts raining in the middle of a drawing or, but I try as much as possible now to get it done on site. And so I, that's what I prefer to do. That's what I like to do. But um, now and again, I'll finish it at home. But the the things that, you know, make me most happy again are the ones that I've done there then. And, you know, finished, I think. Mm -hmm. So from a watercolour point of view, what I do is I put down some watercolour um wait for that to dry or sometimes not you can work into it but you've got to have a decent paper i think for that if you're yeah. going to work into some wet watercolor but i put down some watercolor wait for that to dry that is why actually i often have um two drawings of the same ah, thing yeah, on sure. the go so i put some you know or similar scenes that on this one, I forgot the letter in, and I wanted to put the letter in, so that's why I started the second one. <laughs> so I, I will put watercolour down on a page, and often I'll have one that is on some paper and then a sketchbook drawing as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've got usually two on the go. And again, this is... So the seals, I did that on a piece of paper, but I also had a sketchbook version watercolor down waiting for that to dry so i'll start something else do something else because i feel impatient if i'm out drawing i want to make the most of the time and then once it's dried i work into it with uh color pencils to put up bring all you know bring it all together right. and put all the details and, and that kind of thing on 
That's really clever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that answers Vivian's question, I think. Um, I'm looking for another question here. Um, ah, Deb is asking, how do you sharpen those tiny pencils? Uh, great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> And um, again, I've still not found the best sharpening tool. I think I have to move over to the knife at this point because I, I've always avoided that because I'm a bit clumsy and, you know, imagine taking yeah. my fingers off mm -hmm. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, me so, too. Yeah, I'm scared so, of that too. But I've never really found a satisfactory pencil sharpener. Um, so I have lots. And yeah, it's with great difficulty I sharpen those yeah. uh, little ones. Yeah, until they are all gone. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, let's see. Uh, Maria has a question in class. Um, she says, uh, "What led you, what led you to using watercolor pencils over other media?" And then her second part of her question, I like it even better. She says, "Where do you find most of your inspiration for your work?" So the watercolor pencils. I don't know. I mean, I used color pencils way back when when I was doing ballpoint it, they weren't watercolor pencils there and I was kind of using them as a finishing tool to you know finish off a drawer and maybe put a bit more shading onto something mm -hmm. and, and they were quite waxy ones I think um I don't know where it where that came from the watercolor it was just you know curiosity again of wanting to try something new and and I really don't feel I'm anywhere near using watercolor pencils to the their full ability or the, you know my ability my mm -hmm. full ability yet but that's great that means lots more time to learn and experiment Absolutely, um, yeah. but it, I think it was just a kind of curiosity that led me to trying them out yeah and seeing seeing other people use them as well yeah so are there any artists that um have sort of made you want to use them or are there any artists that you follow that you admire their work of or who inspire oh, you yeah it's always a hard one though because i always as soon as i'm asked forget <laughs> oh yeah oh i have that too i blank out i'm like oh there's this guy or this yeah. art, um yeah. something with an r <laughs> yeah that that guy <laughs> never mind if it pops um, up just yeah, scream I and think, uh, um, really really like um um maru maru Goldas. i don't know if i'm yes. saying that right i don't know either but i know who you yeah mean. her work's really lovely and there are lots of people i look i look at on instagram and whose work i like and I just cannot think of them right now. It doesn't matter. I'll, don't don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you think of them, just let me know. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, here's a question. You just showed some, some uh, drawings that were on paper, but you also, mm. on loose paper, I mean, but you also mm. use uh, sketchbooks. Mm. And Christina would like to know, and also... Uh, Sorry, yeah, Christina would like to know, what is your favorite paper um, when you are sketching out? Um, I like, so more recently actually, because I've been using paint more. So in the last year or two, I, I like using uh, watercolor paper. I still haven't found the best sketchbook um, with what the best paper I've used a few and you know I think oh, they're okay but I kind of like always look for and especially with loose paper I found better results with the loose paper and um, that I always look for a heavyweight watercolor paper but I like the smooth finish um, and I've just had more I've had better results in finding that in the loose pads right. um but but that's what i look for it's a heavyweight watercolor paper right. and just personal choice i like a smoother finish because i had a sketchbook and i think I, it's the Mo moleskina 
watercolor one and i really didn't like the Tension? pencil on that oh, color, right. yeah the color pencil and especially watercolor pencil ink tense i just didn't like the way uh the way those two things work together um and that's that's why I like the smoother finish because mm -hmm. I think you know when you're using color pencil and if you want to put some finer details into things, I you know the textured thing w didn't work so much for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it is really personal choice. I mean, everybody yeah. always wants to know what pen do you use, what 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 brand uh, colored pencil, what mm -hmm. kind of paper. But yeah. For, what works for you doesn't work for someone else or the other way around yeah. Uh, but yeah that's um, at least those are your preferences um, yeah. so so Joanna has um, another mm, unrelated question but very related to what you were talking earlier uh, about so she says when you uh, start with watercolor what are you trying to capture how do you decide what to put down versus what to leave mm. to highlight with colored pencils mm. um I, I think i know what she means yes um yeah. i think because i saw that with uh, the the drawing that you showed with the seals there's this white yeah. around so how do you decide what to put down with colored pens uh, with a uh, watercolor first before yeah. so there is a little bit of planning involved i think yeah 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 there is i think yeah the reason for me using the watercolor first is to map out the drawing so what i'm looking for are the um firstly i want to fit the drawing on the page so when i put the the color uh, the watercolor down that that helps me know where things are going to go and that I've actually fit it all on the page and the more you do that the more the, the better you get at fitting things on the page I remember when I first started drawing I'd always have that thing where I'd start maybe at the top and then you know the interesting bit at the bottom I'd had no room for so by doing this I'm making sure I fit you know, the roofs are here and I wanted the sea here. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mapping out with the watercolour. Right. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just mapping um, the drawing out with the watercolour. And um, so something like that, you know, this one. I don't know how well you can see these, but I wanted to... Yeah, we can see it well, yeah. In a kind of bot botanical garden thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that this tree, which was my main thing, I wanted that to fit on. So what I do is I put the, you know, probably start with the bark, uh, the trunk, mm -hmm. and then just, so what I'm doing when I'm putting the watercolour down and what I'm thinking about is making it, the drawing fit on the page. Um, and that's really my starting point. Yeah, that is, that makes total sense because when you start with pen for example sometimes you just sort of run out of paper <laughs> yeah and that's nice also to yeah, do yeah. that yeah. sometimes and i used to love that you know um also like with miguel's thing with the spiral drawing oh, yeah. and you know i like starting somewhere and not knowing what's going to be what you're going to fit on you know there's that that's nice as well um this is just a different thing i'm trying and i'm wanting to you know, get a part of the scene on t onto the page. Right. So, and then, so I'm starting with just kind of blocks, blocks of colour. Um, you know, really simple on there was just this cat drawing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I wanted to capture that. That's a kind of a splodge of watercolour, I suppose, mm -hmm. but it's... It's it's getting what I want down on the page in block form. So you know, again with the um, seal one, you know, I'd start with I've just decided already that it's going to be blue and it's going to be brown, and so I've mixed up a bit of blue and I mixed up a bit of brown, and I know. You know, um, I then look for blocks of blue and blocks of brown and put those down. And you're halfway there then. Yeah. You know, you, you, <laughs> if you get that right or you get 
you know they're not right proportions or anything but if you get them what you if you get down what you want to get down you're halfway there then the rest is the nice bit which is where the color pencils come in yeah that's that's really great i think that uh, definitely answers joanne's question and it's also the the blocks of color that's also something that in Serrano does a lot she shows that in the uh, watercolor okay. course yeah, so that's that's very recognizable. It's funny to see that um, you you use that technique as well. Like, oh, okay. this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, Jackie in class, she asks, um, "Do you exclusive exclusively? Sorry, I can't even pronounce <laughs> exclusively use watercolor <laughs> pencils, or do you sometimes combine with regular pencils?" Um, I enjoyed watching you draw the coffee cup and was thinking about the lines of the pencils in the cup that were still clear after the water wash. Yeah, I think you mix them, right? Yeah, yeah. I mix. I have all sorts of things. I've got some ink inktense. Yeah. And actually, I think I bought those on because I like the colors. That's where my starting point always is. I like the colors. Mm -hmm. And I've got about a million different greens. And so if I see a different green, it doesn't matter what the brand is. I will, you know, I'll get that. But again, with, the, you know, this little box, it has just like that's Faber castell and then quite a few ink tents but then these which um i don't even know what they are oh that's I think the, them. the woodless uh, uh pencil yeah. right yeah yeah and it's quite wax it's more waxy mm -hmm. i think these are mm -hmm. and then you know these were the ones that i used many years ago charisma i think they're called and they're quite waxy as well and they, uh, I think they've been discontinued now, which is a real shame. It's a shame, I loved yes. Them. They are so yeah. sort of creamy if you use yeah, them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then again, I got these in Blick in Pasadena, and I've used them, and I think there might be, they're either Blick's own, or I'm not sure because they're so small now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I just have a big mix of all different different kinds i buy them all on color i think yeah well. so sometimes you, you you probably use just one of them because of the color and then when you apply water you maybe it's like oh this is actually also <laughs> watercolor yeah so yeah. it might actually I, be a surprise yeah and that's quite nice i think you know those are when those happy accidents you know yeah where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, I have a fun question here from Jen. She was at SketchCon and she says, I loved the moody music playlist that you played during <laughs> SketchCon when you did this, uh, the um, uh, Pasadena Noir, yeah. <laughs> the modeling sessions. So do you listen to different music depending on the art medium? Because she does. Oh, I never thought of it in that way, actually, using the different mediums. No, I don't think I do. I use, I listen to music all the time. Um, and probably the Pasadena Noir one was typical of the sort of music I'd listen to. But um, no, I can't say that I do. But that sounds quite like an interesting project. Very actually. interesting. Yeah. So yeah, because maybe watercolor needs a different mood than yeah, a black ink. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, Jen, maybe you can list a few of your favorite songs yeah. for a different media. I'm I'm really really curious. Yeah, good question. I like it. Um. So, oh, here's a good one from a. Uh, Payal, I hope I uh, pronounced that well. She says, are there any subjects that you prefer more to sketch with the color pencils? Um, definitely outdoor sketching. So like urban sketching, urban scenes, but also landscape I, I'd use. Um, you know, I live in really beautiful green part of the world in the Peak District and, and there's loads of really nice places to go and sketch and it works just as well with a kind of landscape 
I don't know there is really because uh, I kind of use them at the moment I use them all the time for everything so definitely definitely like uh, outdoor sketching um but but no I don't think it's specifically um a subject no no they're just exciting anyway mm. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah yeah good um so let's see um I have another question here that I just want to save uh but first um there's a few similar questions in the classroom and it's about the blending stick because you do this quick little demo about using a, a blending stick. Kay, yeah. Kay is asking, where can you buy these things? Well, you can just buy those in the art supply shop. Yeah, I can't remember where I got them, but it would just be any art supply shop. Yes, you can yeah, get them. yeah, yeah, and you, you can also find them online. Just look for blending sticks, and they sometimes come in a package of two, like a thick one and a thin one. Yeah. Um, and then there's a question, Joanne. She says, "Do you clean the paper blending stumps, and how do you clean them?" And there's a similar question, um, uh, well, uh, I don't know where it is, but um, anyway, it's about cleaning it. Um, do you ever clean them? Uh, no, but with, with varying success, <laughs> I have sharpened them before. And I think that's what, that's what I always thought you could do. You just sharpen them. Yeah. Um, that works well sometimes maybe with the thicker ones yeah um, um and then i think also you can kind of unwrap them a bit you, you can but then it i think they fluff up a little bit then but what right. you can do and i actually show that in in the class maybe joanne has missed that but um uh you can just use a piece of sanding paper and just um, um. um you know uh go over that and okay. just roll it around and then it's clean and it, you sharpen yeah. it that way too so and then they they go for a long time because they're pretty long sticks and you just need yeah it's, it's easy to just uh, clean uh, a little layer off so that's yeah that's the tip i have uh, <laughs> about that um so we are already almost an hour in i can't believe it this goes so quickly every time <laughs> Um, Christina has a question, um, which is actually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Um, she says, do you uh, always use darker pencil over watercolor or do lighter uh, colors work too? Um, yeah, you, I, I can use both. Mm -hmm. um, and... The the thing the trick is to not go too dark with the watercolor, and I have done that, and you know, th then it makes it quite hard. Some of the lighter ones aren't great, and I'm still in search of a really good white, actually. But you can definitely put lighter colors on top and bring, you know. Um, I've got some like silver ones and some cream ones and they kind of bring the, the colors down um, and you can draw you know use put some detail on with them um, but I, I would say just be careful not to go too dark with the watercolor especially if you want to do drawing on top um i think that's what that's what i try to do is just not you know to overdo it but you can there are some other pencils which i've got and i can't remember the name of now and they're like more they've a bit like um an oil pastel or mm -hmm. crayon mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. so they're really waxy yeah and and i've got a bright yellow and bright orange and red and they will actually work go on top of watercolor and and you know I, I think it's because they're kind of oil pastel like mm -hmm. they just sit really nicely on top of the 
the the watercolor without um sort of fading into it right um i can't remember what they're called i'm afraid at yeah the moment, I, but maybe i think you have the um, maybe someone is in the in the comments and knows what you're talking about but i, yeah. I think you also have these um, these pencils that are the china the china markers and they they have this little yeah. um, uh, um, paper yeah the paper and yeah. a, a, just a little tiny string to actually um, uh, make the, the tip go longer um, I think those work well I also think that it's really important to um, make sure that the watercolor has really dried because if yeah. it's still kind of damp and you add um, especially with a sharp pencil you just sort of scratch into it rather than put a layer, a layer on top and I also think that um, oil based pencils might actually work better than wax based pencils but that really depends depends on the making of the pencil yeah. um, and and especially the harder kinds the a little bit cheaper ones they are I think they are harder to apply on watercolor so um, yeah the, the the you know artists um, quality ones they will they will go well but I yeah. think it's also a question of or um, um, you just need to try it because some work really well and some don't. Yeah. So, yeah. And the oil ones, which really seem to work really nicely, um, and you can draw over. So say you put green grass and you wanted to put some flowers in and they work. Um, the, the issue I found with them then is if they're in a sketchbook, they really smudge. When yes. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I... I'm, haven't really found the solution to that yet. I'm sure it's out there, and I think there are probably people. Who we'll, we'll keep on searching. No. And, yeah. And that's yeah, the yeah. fun too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a few um, uh, suggestions too. Um, Payal says I love sometimes to use the general chalk based white pencil for white highlights. That's that okay. often works well too. And um, Tina says that the Karen Dash Neo color. Uh, the lighter colors of those go over darks quite well. So those okay. are really great uh, and suggestions. Yeah, actually, the, I have some metallic Caran d'Ache. So I have golds and silvers, and they do go on top of a da right. any darker colors as well. So right. perhaps it's Caran d'Ache. Right, but, right. Yeah. Great, good. Um, one last question before we go, because I just see that pop up from Yara, um, and she asks, uh, "Have you have you tried to paint on dark paper?" I think she means toned paper, but I'm yeah. not sure. I've ne not really done much of that. I've done some drawing on black paper, but I think I used oh I can't remember what I was using then maybe like a Posca pen or something, but I've, n no, I haven't used any darker papers. I'm probably a bit boring and stick to white. <laughs> or, I don't uh, think that's boring painting. at all. I think colored <laughs> pencils and especially the combination of watercolor and colored pencils is just really exciting on white, on a white background. It's, it's yeah. true, yeah. Excellent, well, we feel the whole hour and uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited <laughs> about all the answers that you gave us. We got some insights and uh, yeah, you were very generous with all your answers and with showing us your art. Oh, so good. thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you. Thank and, you. And um, thank and you. Nice to. Everyone, yes, thanks everyone for hanging out with us and for asking those questions and uh, for uh, being so active in the, in the comment section. That was really fun. Um, you can watch the recording if you came in late. Uh, it will be uh, uploaded uh, right after we finish this, uh, this one, this video. So thanks everyone for joining. Thank you, Andrea, for your time. Thank you. And have a fantastic weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.